a lot of Gen Zers have just very mean things to say. You know, they are furious that they say the boomers stole their futures because the economy is bad and they can't buy a house at 20 years old or just graduating from college and high interest rates and, you know, all this other stuff. And, you know, hey, man, life is not easy. Life is not easy, bro. Life is not easy. But I've got you, little bro. I've got you. I understand your plight. I understand your situation. I understand your pain and your stress and your sadness and your misery. And you want your own property. And you don't like, listen, there are options for Gen Z. There are many, many options for Gen Z. There's options for housing. There are options for living. Gen Z just has to understand that you can't just go around stealing other people's stuff and think you're going to get away with it. Now, if you want something of your own, you may not be able to own one of those luxurious homes that the boomers owned. In fact, most Gen Zers won't even be able to afford a tiny home. Those damn things are going for a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, not a year, a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars these days. But that doesn't mean that there is not hope for Gen Z. All right, I came across this video. I'm going to share it with you guys, and I want you guys to see the possibilities because I think that this is a concept that could really work for Gen Z and show you what is possible for Gen Z. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Form a zero square meter room into a function house. After working tirelessly from childhood, little Trump managed to save enough to buy a house that was less than one square meter in total, a space so small that even cockroaches refused to inhabit it, and it couldn't fit his grandmother's coffin. Initially, he could only fit a simple wooden bed that required him to curl up to sleep each night. So, he decided to completely redesign like this. Firstly, remove the original windows and welded two frames using galvanized square steel to extend outward from the window area. He borrowed expansion screws from his aunt to securely attach the frames to the wall, outsourced with eco-friendly wood veneers. Beneath this new extension, he stored old clothes and bulky items. Then he reinstalled the windows that were initially removed and bring a soft mattress from his second aunt's house to create a bed. He added a tray table that serves as an office area when he puts his computer on it and doubles as a dining table with mixed vegetables. At the end of the bed, he constructed a wardrobe to store various small items. Below this, he organized space to hang his clothes and installed a small bookcase beneath for additional storage. I mean, guys, look at that. Look at that. This is this is absolutely incredible. This is absolutely incredible, and it shows you what is possible when you just use a little bit of imagination and, and put your mind to it. So this video actually came from Home Design 365. I think they did a great job illustrating the possibilities. I'm going to link you to their channel. You can go and check out their channel, subscribe to their channel, enjoy their content. But, I mean, this was a great... This is a great example for Gen Z. Gen Z is always crying about housing. Gen Z is always crying about survival. Gen Z is always crying about hardship. But, you know, in instead of crying about it, you there are options out there. There are mi so many different possibilities. And this was just one of the great possibilities that I saw. That I saw and I thought to myself, you know what? I want this for Gen Z. I want Gen Z. I want this for Gen Z. I want Gen Z to see that there's something for them. I want Gen Z to see that. They can live in something like this. They can have a home. They can have that home. They can have that house. It may not be the biggest of houses, but it will be their houses. It'll be what they is it'll be a place where they can rest their heads. Something that they can be proud of and that they can call their own. You know? That's 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 what I that's what I envision for Gen Z at least. You know, there's a huge skill gap right now when it comes to Gen Z. Like they are not function, they're not doing very well in the workforce. They're just not handling things very well, period. You know, and there's a, there's a skill gap. I was checking out a video from Emma Roloff. And basically, she's worked with these, these people. And you can see, like, Gen Z is, like, they're struggling in the workforce. They're not very good with technology. And they have to basically be taught how to use technology. And it's like, it's like millennials and Gen X are supposed to teach them this stuff. I don't even want to mentor these people. But it's like, I've got some of them reaching out to me. And it's like, it's hard. Because nobody wants to, nobody wants to do wants to work with them or take care of them. I mean, it's it's like, yeah, it is what it is, man. People are going to be surprised or not like to hear that you're actually right. Salesforce did a study that found that only 32 percent of the Gen Z workforce feels like they know how to use their technology within their jobs, which tells me two things. One, we're not doing what we need to be doing to build digital literacy at a younger age preparing our workforce to go out and use the tools that they have available.
And number two, we underestimate the skill sets that the tail end of Gen X and millennials got from growing up alongside technology. For Gen Z, technology has just simply always existed. They weren't developing new skills and learning new things right alongside with new technology as it became available. They weren't learning the basic foundations of coding from building MySpace or playing Neopets. Sure, they had access to technology much earlier in life than most of us did. Everything was available at the tap of a button and friction points have been removed from how they interact with most technology. And of course, we could argue that the business world needs to update the way that they're using technology, which of course I agree with. But that doesn't change the fact that we've kind of created this perfect storm for Gen Z where everybody assumes because they grew up technology native that they should be able to step into technology tools within the workplace like this. And nobody has actually stopped to teach them how to interact with technology the same way that all the rest of us got. The last time I talked about this, I brought up the fact that I had typing lessons in school. So many people chimed in saying that that was never a thing for them. It sounds silly, but something like moving from the Google suite, where all you have to do is press a button to share information with anybody in your school's ecosystem, to moving into the corporate world where there's rules and governance and you're in a different interface on Microsoft Word. And suddenly you can't just share everything with external people. You can only share PDFs. You have to learn how to export that information and attach it to an email and take all of these extra steps that never existed in your world before. And because there were never any friction points, they don't know how to troubleshoot and just kind of dig into it and figure it out the same way that we all did. When I first started in the working world, there was no one to ask my technology questions to because I understood it better than most of my coworkers. So I did research, I dug in, I figured things out, and that made me more self-sufficient. When you've never had to do that kind of troubleshooting and people all around you know how to use the technology, you become more dependent on those relationships and seeking out that information from your peers as opposed to doing the troubleshooting shooting on your own. You know something very interesting and by the way guys, you can go and check out Emma's channel. It's linked in the description. Go check her out support, uh check her out support her content. I mean, she makes a lot of valid points and one of the things with Gen Z is they don't know how to do research. You know, like everything is research research research. You know, we talk about like, you know, even like making a course, learning how to make a course. That's something that Gen Z just would never know how to do cuz they're very lazy. So the idea of having to do research, learning how to build a course, you know, having skill sets that you can provide to others, providing value, those are things that Gen Z struggles with because Gen Z does not want to learn. It's not just the fact that they weren't given, they weren't taught how to do these things. Gen Z does not want to do these things. Gen Z does not want to be in the workforce. Gen Z does not want to work. Gen Z wants to live a soft life. Okay. They want soft lives. You know, that's why you hear things like soft girl era. They don't want to put in the hard work. They don't want to have to struggle. They don't want stress. They don't want any of these friction points. They want to live easy lives where everything is simply handed to them because they think that they deserve it. And it's just not going to be like that. You know, life doesn't work that way. And they're going to learn that the hard way. But, you know, and that's 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 really just how it is. I, you, as I said, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Gen Z. I think that these people, these young people are very, very lazy and their perspectives on life and reality, you know, they, it, it bothers me. It bothers me a lot because they think they're going to just have their way and they're not just, they're not going to just have their way. All right. There are people much worse than angry guy out here. They're going to check them. They're really going to check them and let them know, bro, this is not how it's going to be. You're not just going to step out here and have your way and do whatever the hell you want to do. All right. You're going to be corrected. But anyway, Gen Z keeps on messing around. They mess around. They're going to find out. Like the world is not going to center around them. The world is not going to adopt for them. And like I showed you earlier in the video, there's, there's, there's plenty of housing out there for Gen Z. They just have to be a little bit creative and be, and be willing to work with what they have before them. You know, you know, Gen, Gen X didn't have it easy. And, you know, millennials, they're still crying. I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. It's just how life is. Life is hard, man. I made a poll about this, and it I basically said that, you know, throughout life there will be, there will be points of, uh, there will be points of, of you know, you, you won't have peace throughout your life. Like, you know, life is not a, it's not about peace. You know, you will simply have peaceful moments in your life. Most people will not have, you know, peace throughout their entire lives. They will just have moments of peace in their lives. And Gen Z, 
people think that they should be living in lives of comfort, comfort and luxury. They want to go back to like the good old days after WW2 when, you know, and, and when the boomers were born, they like, they're like, these people are looking back in time. You know what they want something that Gen X didn't experience. The millennials didn't experience. They want, they want, they want some, they want those really, really easy, nice days. It's like, bro, it's not going to happen for you. Like you need to really just suck it up and work with what you have. But anyway, guys, don't forget, I have another channel called Men Walking Away. If you're joining the content on the Angry Guy channel and you want even more of this content, you can head over to the Men Walking Away channel. I post daily videos on that channel, so you can find a link to it in the description of the video. What do you think regarding everything we discussed here today? I just want the best for Gen Z. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWM and walking away. And cheers.